Hello, Stone Life Groups. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I, I hope and pray that you have been encouraged and challenged and inspired by our study walking through the book of James. Been talking about it on Sunday mornings, been talking about it in our groups, and I hope that it has been an encouragement and a challenge to you in your faith. I know it has been in my own life today. For our discussion, we are in James chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. Let me read them here for us. Pastor James says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, you too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no, otherwise you will be condemned. Let's just pull out a couple principles that I think are good for us to discuss around this tack. Number one is this, James's first encouragement is we need to live in confident expectation of the Lord's return live in confident expectation of the Lord's coming. After James has really uh, warned the rich who are pressing the poor, he really turns his attention to the readers of his letter. And he says, be patient, my brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Now we need to remember who James was writing to. These are individuals who after the stoning of Stephen in the book of Acts, a great persecution broke out and these believers were scattered. And now many of them where they scattered to were facing intense persecution because of their faith. They were being mistreated. And what does he say right here? He says, be patient. And it's interesting that word patient in the Greek, here's what it literally speaks to. It is an attitude of self-restraint that does not try to get even for a wrong that has been done. It's an attitude of self-restraint that really doesn't attempt to get even for a wrong that has been done. So James is saying, I know you've been mistreated. I know you're being persecuted. But be patient, have an attitude of self-restraint. I think that's an encouragement, you know, for us all. Times when maybe we're, we're mistreated or we are passed over or we are looked down upon. To really be patient, bring an attitude of Christ-likeness that doesn't try to get even, even when we've been wronged. I, I read in a book years ago, always take the high road. Always take the high road. As I look back upon my life, what, when I've been mistreated in my mind, there's times I haven't taken the high road and there's times I have taken the high road. And as I sit here right now, looking back, the times that I really, really feel good about are the times when I've taken the high road. Man, be patient. Don't, don't retaliate. Set your sights on things above. And then he says, what? He says, don't grumble against each other. Have you ever had it before where, where you were facing stress, you were being mistreated, you were frustrated, and so you took it out on your friends and family? Like you, you didn't mean to? It wasn't they who, who wronged you, but you were just feeling the stress, you were being mistreated. And so he kind of just, just grumbled and took it out on them. And, and James says, don't allow that to be the case in the body of Christ. Man, do, do, don't grumble. Don't slander one another. I, I want there to be peace and unity 
in the body of Christ. And so we, we really live in confident expectation of the Lord's return. Secondly, James' encouragement as we kind of go through this portion of Scripture is to be inspired by those who have gone before us. Look, look, look what he says right there. He says in verse 10, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider bless those who have persevered. You've heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He says, think of the prophets. Think of how they were mistreated. So many prophets who have gone before us have been mistreated. Job, as an example, was put in stocks, thrown in prison, and lowered into a dungeon. And yet he persevered in ministry without bitterness and retaliation. Man, he says, he says, think of those prophets who have gone before. Think of those who have faced hardship. Think of those who have faced persecution. Think of the persecuted church. Think of all the things that, that so many people around the world have faced or are facing today as it pertains to their faith and allow their faith to inspire us. Allow the prophets of old to be an inspiration for us. And number three, lastly here, as we go through, he, he says to be a person of godly reputation. He says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, and here's really what, what was going on is, is what some would do is they would say, I swear or really invoke an oath if they really wanted you to kind of give way to what they were saying. That, that's what was going on. And, and James says this should not be. He, he said we should be individuals of godly reputation so much so that people know that if we say something, it will happen. If we say we'll do it, we'll do it. If we say we'll show up, we show up. We are a person who really aligns our words, what we say, with our character and our actions. We're a person of godly reputation. We're a person of, of character. And, and I believe this is so important in our day and age today. In fact, as a church, we have, we have different leadership team values. We have a vision statement as a church. We have values as a church, but then we have leadership team values as well. And their character and their competence and chemistry and collaboration, health and enthusiasm. But what is at the top? Character. Be a person of character. And in this day and age where there's a lot going on, I believe the most important thing we could do as a follower of Jesus is be a person of character, be a person of Christ-likeness, be a person of godly reputation so that God might be glorified. So James encourages us and challenges us with these things and uh, just hope that's such a, a blessing for us today in our life groups.